Hello, Karine. Ah, bonjour, Cécile. Bonjour. So, uh, you are a jewelry artist that came uh, since January in uh, Ensalimoche, our school. Mm -hmm. So, can you say some words about yourself? Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, <coughs> do you want to know about my study or yeah, what exactly, I'm, yeah. about maybe yeah. your education and where yeah. you're living? And okay, so <coughs> recently I'm living in Berlin, um, but when I did high school, when I finished high school, I went uh, to the Netherlands to study at a uh, technical school in Schoenhoven. It's a small place uh, close to Gouda. Um, I did first three years goldsmithing there, then one extra year silversmithing, and after that I did uh, one practical year in Amsterdam. And um, after that I applied at Rietveld Academy, and I studied for five other years there. So my diploma I made in uh, 95, 1995. And after three years longer in Amsterdam, I went to Berlin, where I live since then. And uh, yeah, my studio earlier in Amsterdam, I had a studio with a friend together. But in Berlin, I work in my uh, apartment. And uh, when you were at the Ritwell Academy, uh, did you do specific uh, jewelry studies? Or where is it? Uh, uh, like art, more no, like sculpture yeah. or design, yeah, or is yeah. it just like yeah. jewelry? No, uh, Rietveld is like, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, <laughs> it was um, that you have one basis here, everyone is doing, and you, uh, you apply for the direction you want, but then you have to do a basis here mm -hmm. where you can look into sculpture, into painting, into jewelry in all the different direction and after this uh, first year you decide which direction you want to take. Um, I choose uh, jewelry and my first professor was Marion Herbst um, because I started in the evening class I worked during the day and then I changed to the day class and uh, I had three Peters as professor. So it's really that you have a, a, yeah, a direct jewelry department, not art or design. You have that as well, but uh, these are mm. other okay. um, departments. Okay. Thank you. So you are at uh, ENSA since January, and mm. uh, what are your impressions about uh, the school or the space where mm. you're working? Um, I'm very happy <laughs> it's uh, yeah it was or it still is very nice here i i could work here in this uh, porcelain studio which is fantastic huh? you have beautiful light you have a big space you have different areas here is more the area for building molds mm -hmm. over there you can cast pieces here they get to dry, over there is the ovens where they come in. So now that it was fantastic. Huh? It, uh, yeah, I, I had a lot on this time. And I like the school also, I like the building. I like this uh, clear structure, this long uh, corridor and then the ah, departments yeah, and uh, go down and have other one. And oh, yeah, to go on <laughs> the chalet, we have the petit chalet. It's fantastic, really. Now we have little ants, but uh, before it was uh, only spiders. <laughs> no, it was, no, it was not really... Uh, it was, it, yeah, it is great. Huh? It's also that it's so close to school. You are really uh, focused uh, yeah, to work here. Stay, yeah. yeah. And uh, so, what was, how did you know how to apply for this residency? Um, I think it was in January last year, I uh, was in Gothenburg and I met Terry, who did a lecture there. And we had a beer together afterwards and uh, she told me uh, that she was staying here. And Terry, I know from Rietfeld, we studied uh -huh. together. 
So uh, Terry told me about this uh, residency, but she said, okay, it's uh, October, November, December. And I said, yeah, but these are the months I have to work uh, mm -hmm. for my um, bread winning work. <laughs> so this is not possible. And then later she said, ah, apply, apply, because we postponed it uh, to begin of the year. This I did, and uh, I asked my boss, and uh, it was okay from him. <laughs> then I was accepted. He was a bit uh, shit, <laughs> but yeah, he liked it for me as well. So, and so, uh, is it like have you ever tried porcelain before? No, in no, no, no. I work with porcelain, but uh, I used ready-made pieces I bought at the flea market in Berlin. Mm -hmm. So I work with porcelain, but only with already made pieces, huh? with broken porcelain, uh, where I add parts to make it complete, mm -hmm. to make a jewel out of it. Okay. Thank you. And so, uh, yeah, I saw that uh, when I did research and when I saw on your website your pictures, I saw that you're working, uh, you're using uh, lately a specific technique in your how do you make your, your volume in mm. your jewelry? Like you use punched out tiny dots that mm -hmm. make the shape. And so you're constructing with tiny dots, mm -hmm. uh, layers by layers. Mm -hmm. And is it uh, like, how did you proceed with the porcelain? Because the porcelain, you have to think about it before yeah. and just make it in one yeah, shape yeah. directly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, did you have an idea when you came in Limoges about what you wanted to do? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when I gave my lecture, in the last part of my lecture, I talked about uh, the theme I'm working on, this uh, void, the void, the void, exactly. And um, it was already when I applied here, I had already, or I was working on this uh, spoon series where I casted the inside of spoons. And when I applied, I thought, now, if I could do that in porcelain, should be fantastic. I thought then that uh, it should be massive. Eh? Mm -hmm. I just, I thought I just cast the porcelain in the spoon and I'm ready. So, but it was not uh, easy I like that. Like <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the very nice thing is that um, the pieces are hollow like my other shapes. Eh? Mm -hmm. It is true. by this yeah. uh, technique that you cast in, wait a little and pull back. You get hollow shapes as well. So, yeah, in fact, um, it's, it is exactly what I, I didn't thought about, but what I wanted, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, is, there, like, is it a mold you did? This is a mold, but I just saw it's not the, it is beautiful from the outside. It's my last mold oh, I made oh, earlier. Earlier I had more molds like that, so this is a quite big one. But uh, it is the mold for the moon, the moon uh -huh. necklace. But uh, parts of the moon are still inside. <laughs> it happened at the last casting, so it's not completely out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you can take it out. Uh, I, yeah, it yeah, of course. I, I also will keep the molds. Uh, if you want to. Because I could imagine that I, in, even in Berlin, even when tourists say, no, not possible, I can imagine to continue with that. Mm -hmm. oh, it's, uh, and even if you have the mold, you can just like prepare your own exactly. porcelain liquid and exactly. pour it. And I could give it to someone to burn or mm -hmm. or to fire it. Or um, I mean, I can perhaps think about buying an own oven. Huh? And how did you make this shape? Um, <laughs> well, this is uh, we don't have so much. Um, plates and bowls in our apartment but we have one bowl uh -huh. <laughs> so I put uh, plaster in the upper part of the bowl twice and then I made it flat I put it together and at first I cast it one side that then I put the other side on top and then I cast it the other side and here is uh, the casting channel here is a special drill who make this beautiful uh, half-round uh, shape, sir. Mm -hmm. huh? 
and uh, even you can put the maybe uh, yeah, you can use the the wool for making an assembly or something. I have. I can show you later with my uh, moons. It's uh, the string goes here. Mm -hmm. True. So you can uh, hang it. Yeah. And so uh, how? How do you That's why the reason I made two, otherwise, ah, ah, otherwise one should be enough. Huh? So you had to think about it before, yeah. cost every time. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, like, if, how do you feel in front of this material that he has a lot of place for the chance? Because yeah. you never know what's going to happen. happen in the kiln, or is yeah. it like something that you leave... Uh, completely finely or is yeah. it quite frustrating? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think uh, what happened in the kiln is mostly okay. I have mm -hmm. some that are broken in the kiln, uh, two with color on, with emai on, and some with glacier on, but mostly as soon as it goes into the kiln, it's okay. It's much more frustrating to pull in the porcelain, wait a moment, pull it out, open the shape and it just uh -huh. sink into each other but but yeah then you just do it again yeah, you retry. yeah. Okay. so now we are in the jewelry workshop yes and uh, so can you show us what you did during those three months in uh, emsa mm, yeah now as you can see i have here from all the molds I made. I have uh, the shapes and I have from I have uh, from the spoon series from the voids I made um, 10 uh, different shapes. Um, <coughs> then I also made another shape uh, which is thought for a ring. It should come on the finger and then I have uh, holes mm -hmm. here and a ring comes through so that it uh, lays on the finger like that. I made this shape and a while ago I made a wide ring with a bowl on top mm -hmm. so uh, it was a little inspired by that but now I want to use it just as a simple pendant and uh, put a cord through. So these are the shapes and uh, I started with the white shapes, of course. Uh, it was, uh, I liked white porcelain a lot and I made a lot, lot, lot of shapes. I think what is laying here is a um, little more than 100 pieces. Oh. But I packed already uh, more than 50 pieces. <laughs> so um, I, I did a lot in white in the beginning and I think most of the pieces laying here, they are from the gas, this very, very strong white. Some are later, some are from the electric, but still it's a very beautiful white. And then I uh, thought I also would like to have color in. What you see here is, um, yeah, what we tried, I think from middle of February on. We worked uh, with Patrick in the Imai or in the decor and um, in the beginning it was difficult uh, because uh, if you put the color on with a brush you get a structure and since the shape is so clear and perfect I also wanted the surface to be very um, straight, uh, not, not that you see the line of the brush. So he showed us uh, the way how to do with this um, spray, yeah. spray. You put uh, the imai in there and you go over with the spray. Now that, uh, that worked fantastic. It's, uh, and even those ones are with the spray? No, no. This is uh, this I did uh, in the end. This is uh, when I mixed the porcelain with the pigments before, huh? so that uh, this is without glacier, mm -hmm. the shape, and when you put glacier on, it's really a bit lapis lazuli, it's right. very intense blue. So I did uh, with blue, I did it, and with the yellow, that's, uh, I put color inside. When I discovered that, it, um, 
worked much better for me because you have to be very careful with the uh, colored porcelain. You not just can throw it away. You have to catch it and use it again, and catch it and use it again. And I, um, yeah, each shape I made was successful. Huh? And with the white, I, uh, I put my uh, molds there and I cast the white in. I turn, turn, turn. And I think from the 10 I casted, perhaps four or five succeeded because I was a bit impatient and so on. And it was the, the, like the beginning, you know? It was the yeah, beginning. Yeah. It was the beginning, yeah. yeah. And so, so you did 10 different molds? 10 different molds with a spoon uh -huh. and then this little bubble, I call it, huh? and then this round shape, make 12. Okay, now I <coughs> wanted to show that piece because this is the moon which finally came out from the mall I uh, showed in the porcelain studio. It's um, amazing is that it's really so much smaller than uh, in the mall. I mean this 14% you know but you can't think of. But um, here you see on the back side the two holes. Mm -hmm. So the string goes through and then it's just hanging it like that. It's a bit heavy but yeah the moon is also not that light. <laughs> And is it, uh, yeah, it's a two different kiln. It's, like it's not the first uh, um, burned. It's, uh, like yeah. It has, to, it has to be in one kiln yeah. after you glaze it? Exactly, okay. degodi, degodi. And then uh, when you have this degodi, it's a bit more stable. Um, it may not get wet. Mm -hmm. And yeah, then you place it there and you go over with this uh, this is the spray spray gun. spray oh. again as well here you see uh, the moon from the gas oven mm -hmm. normally it's really white but the light make it a bit uh, yellowish oh this is different yeah it um, th this is a little what can happen what you can't uh, think of because the casting channel stayed here mm -hmm. a little, so I made it, uh, uh, I filed it a bit down, and now it's perfect round. Yeah. And uh, I made three moons. This is the last, it's very wow. dark. It's, it's a color, it's so that you not even can see what kind of shape it mm -hmm. has. Huh? The volume, the three dimensionality, really get lost it uh, mm -hmm. you have to look does it goes in or does it goes you out you want to touch it. absolutely uh -huh. absolutely and is it you that making your own mixture of colors for trying to get the right colors mm. it no not not yet it um, i think i need uh, three other months to stay mm -hmm. here <laughs> Here, no, but uh, <laughs> but uh, Patrick has a lot of colors and he showed mm -hmm. us, but of course it should be in the next step also be nice to mix colors to see what comes mm -hmm. out. Huh? But these are the pure colors we took like uh, he gave them to us. You have to add uh, some ingredients, water, a kind of sugar to make it uh, a bit smoother mm -hmm. and uh, glacier. You also have to add glacier. This is a bit in between completely matte and yeah, uh, shiny. Exactly. And this glacier makes, if I understood well, that uh, it uh, goes good over the piece. Uh. Nice. Yeah, this is the sun. I, I only managed one, but I have the mull. So I would like uh, one day I would like to make also a really yellow sun. I mean, sun has to be yellow as well. <laughs> like this one? Like <laughs> that. I mean, this yellow is incredible. It's one of my favorite. Here you have um, another project I uh, worked parallel on. It's, um, um, let's say, one day um, 
it's a brooch for one day, huh? but it don't mean that I make one brooch in one day. With the porcelain it went quicker, but I also work with my PVC, but I want to have 365 days in that uh, project. So I thought I also take some porcelain days mm -hmm. in between. And do you think that, because you showed me that the 355 days brooches were with the tiny dots mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. PVC, and are you gonna put some PVC on it as well? No, no not, no, not no, here, just like not yeah. here, not okay. here. It is uh, so pure with well, uh, just like the color, if paper. you're... Yeah, if you have it like that as a brooch, uh, I have to make the mechanism, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, then... Uh, no, here I, um, I'm not sure if I will mix the PVC and the porcelain. I'm, I'm not sure about that. Uh, so you came with Karin uh, during these three months of residency. Mm, yeah. And so you tried as well to do porcelain. Right? Yeah, I um, had to do something. <laughs> <laughs> and so how, like, how did it came, like, did, did you want to, to do a specific thing? No, at first I, I started with this egg and it was that I was invited to an exhibition called the uh, Alchemical Egg and uh, each artist should make three brooches. And I made one in porcelain, one in wood, and one in, in steel. Mm -hmm. And why I made an egg in porcelain was because porcelain was important for the alchemists. And, but I couldn't do it myself, so I asked a, a ceramic in the area where I'm working. But she, she cannot cause, she made it uh, by ah, hand. She and cut it. Uh, yeah, and then it don't get so wet. So I thought if I shall do something here, maybe I shall try to make a better egg than <laughs> she. <laughs> so this I started with and I, yeah, I cost like five. Then I, then I thought I maybe shall try other shapes that I was busy with at the moment. Mm -hmm. I started with this, uh, it's called, uh, the shape, shape is called Super Ellipse. I made it in three different shapes. Super Ellipse was, was a French mathematics in the 1870-something. Gabriel Lamé, I think his name was, uh, who found out uh, this shape, there are a mathematical formal to create it, but I, it was used, uh, used a lot in, uh, it is used a lot in, uh, in uh, architecture, furniture and so on, so I, I just took the shape from, from a catalog or uh, tables. And, and did you, uh, sorry, yeah, no, yeah. did you cut it uh, when you do the mold? Yeah. How do you do the mold? Is it like wood? That you saw? Uh, the first, oh. I, I uh, like the egg and the first ellipse, I, uh, I uh, cut out in, uh, in, uh, in uh, clay. Mm -hmm. That uh, it was a little difficult to, to get it good because it's so fragile when it gets dry. So then I. Uh, the last one, like this two shape, I cut out in, in wood. Those ones? Yeah, and this also. Okay. Um, then I was, yeah, it was a little easier. Is it gonna be uh, brooches? Yeah, I will uh, finish them when I'm back in Sweden, so I will make a, uh, mechanism in silver. I don't know exactly how, but and then I will glue them mm -hmm. uh, to the backside. Then I actually have been sewing out a lot of mechanism also mm -hmm. when I've been here. Ah. Well, the part of them, all the mechanism. They're all ready for. 
Yeah, uh, one part of the eight, the mechanism by, I will solder the chenier and the mechanism on the silver piece and then glue it. And um, I will make t three of them from the ellipse shape for the school oh. collection. Nice. I don't know exactly now which I shall choose. Continue porcelain, or it's don't think so. Enough? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not enough. I, uh, it was nice when I started to to uh, make them in, make the color on them. Mm -hmm. But the first part I didn't like so much. No, it's also that I don't have the possibility to uh, work with porcelain. So I think it will be no more. Thank you very much, Karine and Tori. Yeah, you're welcome.